But how tickled I am. I'll say, how tickled I am. See that? How tickled it is to be here, here on 321, Yorkshire Television's answer to the Open University. Oh, how wonderful to be on this program with marvellous Ted. Ted, Ted Rogers, the thinking man's Kermit. When you think... Well, so he does this, uh, this three to one with his fingers. One night, you know, and he actually froze in mid twiddle. And, uh, froze in mid twiddle, and he started getting fan letters from Harvey Smith. This. Everybody, everybody in Britain, everybody in Britain these days is game show mad. Even Bamba Gascoigne, at home on a Sunday morning, he's hopeless unless his wife gives him a start of a ten. Uh, and Magnus Magnuson's missus, she says to him, Well, you've started, so you better finish. This. <laughs> I was on one of the very, very first game shows on animal, vegetable, or mineral. But they didn't guess which one I was. Uh, <laughs> these days, you have to, on a game show, whether you're on the show like this or a contestant, you have to think positive. Think positive. Be like the man who dashed home from work, burst into his house and shouted, I want to, I can do, and I will do. And he would have done, but his wife had gone out playing bingo. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's life. Life is a contest. Now, with me, you see, I go in for a lot of these Mr. Universe contests, and uh, because with having a perfect physique, I, <coughs> yes, I'm a bit like you, sir. You're low chested as well. This, a lot of people say I look like Rambo. <coughs> Pardon? That's Dumbo, yeah. I, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of posing, you know, for these girly magazines. Did you see me? A fortnight ago, I did the centerfold in Exchange of Mart. I was, I was, uh, it was very tasteful, but they ruined it with the staple. I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of, uh, I'm not ashamed of growing old. I think 37 is a very good age to be. I, I'm, well, I've just turned 37. Before I turned, it was 73. I was, I was lying in the bath this morning, stock taking, and I was thinking to myself, look, I was, I was, I was admiring my profile. You see, all, oh, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know, but years ago, you know, I used to be, uh, I used to be a male stripper. Mm, I was known as Mighty Thor. <laughs> if the central heating was working. <laughs> Mighty Thor, I used to come onto the stage wearing a winged helmet, leather thongs right up my legs, snug-fitting leather shorts. From the back, I looked like a brewer's dray horse. <laughs> I used to stand in the spotlight, waving my shorts over my head. All the ladies in the audience would be screaming, get them on, get them on! <laughs> you have to make the most of yourself. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people these days are having hair transplants. You know, that, look at Elton John. He's had so many hair transplants, his dandruff can't remember whose head it belongs to. <laughs> and that, see, that is one. That is one of the great game shows, one of the greatest contests in Britain today. The North versus the South, the rivalry. Because they laugh at us, you know, because we say Sithy and not but just. And <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I told my dad I was coming into show business. I told my dad, my dad said, he looked at me, dad said, Nay, lad, oh, lad, ah, lad, nay, lad, eh, lad. Hey, lad. No, lad, ah, lad, nay, lad, no, but just lad, ah, lad. And I'd never heard my father speak to me like that before. Because <laughs> he's Welsh. <laughs> See, at one time... At one time, you see, the South wouldn't, wouldn't let us in. They had this big fence, it was boarded off. There's this big wall, it was a fence, going from Milton Keynes to the Wash. And uh, we couldn't get in, the, the Northerners. They had this, like a door at Walsall, and uh, us Northerners, we used to knock on the door and say, Hey, 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 greedily, ah, oh, lad, hey, lad. Can we have a bath? <laughs> and the Southerners would cheerily chuck a bucket of hot tar over us. Now, see, they've never really forgiven us for the Battle of Watford Gap. Now, oh, yes. Battle of Watford Gap, it happened there. See, there was King Arnold of Wigan. Now, yes, King Arnold of Wigan had the roundheads, so-called, because they count the way we had our hairs cut with the, with the basins. And he fought King Cyril of Surrey. They, he was in charge of the Cavaliers. They had the long, wavy tresses down here. And, uh, well, of course, twink. This <laughs> King Arnold of Wigan, he was the pretender to the throne. He used to go around saying, I'm the king! <laughs> I am the bravest man in England. I have a huge weapon. The, uh, what, the roundheads, you see, the roundheads were rough and toothless. They're tough and ruthless. The roundheads had these huge broadswords, whereas the cavaliers only had little dirks. Uh, it's a little dirk, madam. It's like, it's a small... Well, never mind what it is, anyway. They, 
at the Battle of Watford Gap. It took place in the car park behind the services. And the ram, the cavaliers, <laughs> showered salvo after salvo of aftershave lotion, brilliantine, and, and, and talcum powder over the poor old roundheads. But the roundheads replied, because they had the ultimate weapon, the mushy pea bomb. <laughs> The mushy pea bomb. It was, a, it was a terrible device that left all uh, the buildings unharmed and Ted Rogers standing. Now, this... <laughs> what a battle it was. Men were going down like flies, dying like flies, lying on their backs, waving six legs up in the air. And, and of course, it was a victory for the North, which is a pity, really, because my granddad had him down for a draw. But <laughs> here in Yorkshire, ladies and gentlemen, here in Yorkshire, I mean, we're the greatest at Yorkshire, aren't we? Yeah. Yes! It's the air up here. It's so bracing in Yorkshire. Last time I was here, I had my teeth fixed. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I spoke at a turn in the pub over the road. <laughs> what did they say up here? Say it with me. Yorkshire born, Yorkshire bred, strong in the arm. <laughs> Tassie bye, everybody. Tassie bye.